Hello and welcome to the Katie Halper Show. I'm about to play an excerpt from an interview that I did with Tara Reid. The full episode will be up shortly. As a warning, Tara discusses sexual assault during this interview. Tara was one of eight women to accuse Joe Biden of some form of inappropriate touching last spring after Nevada politician Lucy Flores alleged that the vice president inappropriately touched her during her run for Congress. Tara told journalists that in 1993, when she was a staff assistant to then Senator Biden, he put his hands on her shoulders and rubbed his fingers up and down her neck. But Tara says there's more to her story and she considered telling it last spring. But after coming forward and being smeared as a Russian agent and being doxxed, she did not. We now know from Ryan Grimm's 324 article on The Intercept, Tara did try to come forward once again in January of 2020. Tara turned to Time's Up, the nonprofit dedicated to helping women in the post-MeToo world tell their story. But Time's Up, Ryan Grimm reports, was concerned such a political story involving a potential presidential candidate could affect their nonprofit status. So here, Tara finally tells the rest of the story that she hasn't been able to tell in the past. Not surprisingly, there are no witnesses to Tara's story of alleged assault, but Tara's brother and Tara's close friend, both of whom I spoke to, recall Tara telling them about the incident at the time. Here is an excerpt. I'll be releasing the full interview shortly. And this opens with Tara describing a superior calling her into her office to ask her to do an errand. So she says that she called me in and said, I want you to take this to Joe. He wants it. He wants you to bring it. Hurry. And I said, okay. And it was a gym bag. She said, you know, take the gym bag. She called it athletic bag. And, you know, she said he was down towards the Capitol and he'll meet you. And so I went down and I was heading down towards there. And he was at first talking to someone. I could see him at a different distance and then they went away. And then um, we were in like the side. It, it was like the side area. And um, he just said, hey, come here, Tara. And then I, I handed him the thing and he greeted me. He remembered my name. And then it, we were alone and it was the strangest thing. There was no like exchange, really. He just had me up against the wall. And, um, I was wearing like a skirt and, you know, business skirt, but I wasn't wearing stockings. It was kind of a hot day that day. And I was wearing heels. And I remember my legs had been hurting from the marble, you know, of the Capitol, Mm -hmm. like walking. And I, so I remember that kind of stuff. I remember like I was wearing a blouse and he just had me up against the wall and the wall was cold. And I remember he, it happened all at once. The gym bag, I don't know where it went. I handed it to him. It was gone. And then his hands were on me and underneath my clothes. And, um, yeah. And then he went, Oh, he went down my skirt, but then up inside it. And he, uh, penetrated me with his fingers, whatever. And, um, I, uh, he was kissing me at the same time and he was saying something to me. He said several things and I can't remember everything he said. I remember a couple of things. I remember him saying first before, like, as he was doing it, do you want to go somewhere else? And then him saying to me, when I pulled away, he, um, got finished doing what he was doing. And I kind of was pulled back and he said, he said, come on, man, I heard you liked me. Mm -hmm. And it's that phrase stayed with me because I kept thinking what I might've said. And I can't remember exactly if he said I thought or if I heard, but it's, it's like he implied like that I had done this, like, I don't know. And for me, it was like every, everything shattered in that moment because I knew like we were alone. It was over. Right. He wasn't trying to do anything more, but it's, I looked up to him. He was like my father's age. He was this champion of women's rights in my eyes. And I couldn't believe it was happening. It didn't see, it seemed surreal. And I, I just, I knew, I, I just felt sick because he, when he pulled back, he looked annoyed and he said um, something else to me that I, I don't want to say. And then he said, he, I must've looked shocked and he grabbed me by the shoulders. I don't know how I looked, but I must've looked something because he grabbed me by the shoulders and he said, you're okay. You're fine. You're okay. You're fine. And then he walked away and he went on with his day. And what I remember next is being in the Russell building, like where the big windows are and the stairs by myself and my body, I was shaking everywhere because, and it was cold all of a sudden. And I was, I don't know. I felt like I was shaking just everywhere. And I was trying to grasp what had just happened and what I should do. 
or what I should say. But I knew it was bad because he was so angry. Like when he left, like I could feel, you know how when you know someone's angry, they mm. don't necessarily have to say anything. Like he smiles when he's angry and you can just feel it emanating from him. Like, Do you want to share that thing that you said you don't, like you said, like, I, I don't want to say what he said, that thing he said to you? Um, yeah, I can, I guess I could. I mean, you, you don't have to. It's okay. It's just, um, it's almost like giving a weapon to them. How so? Well, it's like, I don't want them to know how much it hurt. I don't, mm. you know, I, mean? I don't want him to know when they, I don't know. But that yeah, like that I, you remembered it. Yeah. Just, just the, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I can say it. Um, yeah, there was something he said that I didn't want to say, and I didn't want to say it because it's the thing that stays in my head mm. over and over. Like, like, and um, it's a thing that <clears throat> kind of stayed with me over the years, but he said, um, when he had me against the wall after he'd done, after I pulled away and he had said, Hey, you know, come on, I heard you liked me. And I um, knew he was angry right after he took his finger. He just like pointed at me and he said, you're nothing to me. And then he, he just looked at me and he goes, you're nothing, nothing. And then I must have reacted. And I think he only said it twice. I said, but, I, but I just heard the word nothing mm -hmm. and, and I must've reacted because that's when he took me by the shoulders and he said, you know, you're okay. You're fine. You're okay. But then afterwards, like it kept replaying in my head. I'm like last April when all that stuff came out, <clears throat> I got really, really sad about it. And it, the thing that I remember most, almost more than the assault itself, was just being told I was nothing. And he was right. That's how people treated me. Mm. That's how office treated me. And I have no platform. I am no one. And to him, I'm nothing. So, yeah. Um, so, if people want to know why women don't come forward, that's a good example of why.